everyone, and welcome to ET's Fundamentals. For today's topic, I'm going over everything you could need to know about layers. Surprisingly, each Adobe program does layers slightly differently, so to keep things manageable, I'll go over all the aspects of layers in Photoshop first, and then at the end I'll go over how each of the programs is slightly different. Thankfully, they all do the same basic things. So let's get started. So it might seem really simple, but to start, what are layers exactly? The simplest way of explaining it is that layers are images on transparent paper stacked on top of each other. Anywhere that doesn't have visual information on a layer will let anything else below it poke through until there is information there. They're one of the things that makes Photoshop, or any graphic editor, so fantastic. They're what enable non-destructive editing or making changes to content while still having the original image or footage in case something goes wrong. Layers are organized in the layer panel in Photoshop in what's known as the layer stack. In the panel, the layer on the top of the stack will cover or affect everything else beneath it. Everything to do with layers can be worked on inside the layers panel. Like every other window and panel in Adobe programs, the layer panel has a few different options, which you can find under the small menu icon on the top right of the panel. You'll find a lot of options in the layers panel, from making new layers or smart objects, to making new artboards in the most recent update. At the bottom of the menu, you can find the panel options. Inside of here, you can change the size of your layer's thumbnails or turn them off altogether, change what's shown in the thumbnail, and adjust some of the default options for new layers. To keep things organized, the panel offers something called groups. These do the same things as folders on your desktop. Make a group folder, drag the layers you want in there into the group, and give the group a name to tell you what's in it. For even more organization, the layers panel offers a search feature at the top. It lets you search by the kinds of layers, the effects on a layer, what blending mode a layer is set to, and even more. When you have a ton of layers and bigger projects, which you will tend to do, this is fantastic. Another part of the panel is linking layers. This makes it so you can connect multiple layers in your stack together. Moving or adjusting any of the linked layers will then affect everything else that's linked to it. You can do this by selecting multiple layers as well, but it saves you a step. To do it, select your layers you want linked and click on the small chain link on the bottom of the panel. Along with all of that, the layers panel also has the option to lock the contents of your layers. This lets you protect parts of the image and lets you edit the rest directly on the layer. These are, going from the left where it says lock, a transparent, pixels, position, and all locks. These are pretty self-explanatory. If you use the transparency lock, it means anything you do on the layer will only apply to the existing pixels in the layer. So for an example, you could lock a layer's transparency and then use a brush set to color mode, and no matter how large the area you paint is, the only things that'll be colored will be the pixels of that layer. The image pixels lock does the opposite of the transparency lock. If you're working on a layer with transparencies, this lock makes it so the actual pixels of the layer can't be touched, while you can make your effects in the transparencies preserving the image. All that said, you can still move and scale the layer, and because they're not actually part of the layer's pixels, you can use layer styles while this lock is active. As the reversal of the image pixels lock, the position lock lets you do any edits to the layer's content themselves, but you can't resize or move the layer. And lastly, the lock all lock does exactly what you think it does. The only changes you can make to a layer while this lock is active is changing its position inside of the layer stack. With this lock active, you can't apply any effects to a layer, nor can you apply layer styles. Speaking of layer styles, let's go over them a bit. Layer styles are effects applied to layers which will alter the content of said layer. They're a form of non-destructive, quick edits on the layer, which can be easily adjusted after the fact. Using the FX button on the bottom of the panel will show you all of your basic styles. Alternatively, you can also double click on the layer you want to apply styles to, which will open your layer style dialog box, from which you can apply all your styles and do advanced blending options. For the styles themselves, we'll start with the bevel and emboss effect. What this does is it takes your layer and adds highlights and shadows to opposite sides of the image. If you're using a layer with some transparency, this can give you an engraved look with options over where the lighting is coming from and the color and visibility of your highlights and shadows. Inside of the bevel and emboss effect, there are also options to adjust the contour and texture. The texture is fairly obvious in that it lets you place and scale a texture over your beveled layer. Less obvious is the contour option. In the case of this effect, it lets you adjust the curves, ridges, edges, and bumps that are being created with your embossing. 
There are a few preset contours to play around with to really get a feel for what I'm talking about though. Next is the stroke effect. Adding a stroke allows you to outline your layer's content with a color, gradient, or pattern. It's really as simple as that. You can adjust the size, the blending mode, the color, or the gradient, or the pattern. After that are the inner and drop shadows. These create a shadow effect on top of and behind the layer's content, respectively. As a default, they use black at 35% opacity on multiply blending mode and will be set to a 120 degree angle. You can also change how soft the shadows are and how far from the edges the shadows stretch. The opposite of shadows are the inner and outer glow styles, which create create highlights above or behind the content. These have the same options as the shadows and are set default to white on screen mode. The only real difference is that unlike the shadows, glows can't be distanced from the content edges. A style that I've never really seen look good is the satin style. This applies shading on the interior of your layer to give it a glossy appearance. There might be a use for this, but I've not found it. Last comes the color, gradient, and pattern overlay styles. These will give your layer a solid fill of either a color, gradient, or pattern. These have options for adjusting the colors, blending modes, opacity, scale, and angle to make them all interact differently. Layer styles also have some shortcuts for easily editing multiple layers with them. On any layer with styles, you'll see a small FX symbol on the layer. You can click and drag this to any other layer and it will shift the styles to the layer you drop it on. You can also copy and paste the styles to other layers by simply right-clicking on a layer and choosing to copy a layer style on the first layer and then paste the layer style on the others. Though a slightly faster way to do this would be to hold down Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC and drag the effects to another layer, which will do the same thing. Although if you do this on the layer itself and miss the FX, it'll copy that layer instead. Lastly, you can also right-click and choose to clear layer style, which will remove all styles on that layer, including the blending mode and opacity changes. In addition to all of these, Photoshop does come with several presets that combine them all for certain effects. To see them, you open the Styles window and choose the type of presets you want to use, ranging from textures and text effects to pre-built styles for your web design mockups. Now there is something to keep in mind with these, you should use them sparingly. Much like fonts such as Papyrus and Comic Sans, layer styles have been used to death, and even even if they weren't, not all of them look good in the first place. Subtlety isn't a bad thing. Lastly, we'll be going over smart objects. Smart objects are a type of layer which are also containers. Inside of a smart object, you'll have any graphics, masks, and text on the elements inside, which you can see by right-clicking on a layer and choosing to edit the contents. These are great for a number of reasons, the main one being that because they're not graphics themselves, to a certain point they're vector and scalable and movable without having aliasing. They're not totally vector, so they have more limits than something you would make in Illustrator, but they won't break down quite as easily as a normal layer would. Even better, they contain all of the original information you put in them, as long as they're not rosterized. Anything you change inside of the object will carry through. For an extreme example to show what I mean, here's a smart object which I've twisted around. Now, let me just quickly change something in the smart object's contents and save. Going back, here's what it looks like now. This is great for making stationary packet and presentation example graphics, and because they're containers and not actually pixels inside the file, it makes your PSD file smaller as well. So that's layers in Photoshop. Like I said in the start, for some reason, each of the programs does them slightly differently. The basics stay the same, so I can briefly go over the ways the rest are different now. Illustrator and Muse both treat layers more like groups. Anything you make will automatically add a new object inside of the layer you've selected, called sublayers. It's not really that drastic a difference, but it can be weird when you're used to Photoshop's layers at first. Stranger still for newcomers is InDesign's layer system. This program also uses the sublayers, but where it's slightly different and more confusing is that when you're working with multiple pages, which if you're using InDesign you should be, not only are the layer you're using as a container, but so is the page that layer is on. What this means is that your layer 1 on page 1 will have different content than layer 1 on page 2. Unless you've connected the pages together in what's known as a spread, you can only edit a single page and its contents at a time. For the AV programs, After Effects, Audition, and Premiere use tracks and 
instead of layers. These tracks contain your footage, images, other Adobe files, and audio. These pieces of media aren't directly changeable in these programs as they're not actually editing them like you would be in Photoshop and Illustrator. All of these programs have effects and styles that can be added as well. So that's about it for Layer Basic. The last thing I'll go over here is the Layer Shortcuts. And that's it for our second episode. Hope everyone's enjoyed. You can let me know what you thought and give suggestions with a comment below. You can also like this video and subscribe to my channel for more awesome content. Have a great day, everyone.